Well, the Hercules tools from Harbor Freight have finally started to go brushless. And as you see here, I do have the Hercules five inch cordless brushless ankle grinder. Now, Harbor Freight did, they did reach out and they did send this to me. So they must, they must like it. And according to the guy who contacted me, he says that they do like it, that they have went through extreme lengths to try to test this and make sure that it's a quality product. He also gave me some other information on some Hercules brushless tools that are coming up, some that are and some that are not. So I'll do a separate video on that. If you're interested in that, definitely stick around for that. And if you're new here, my name is Brian and on this channel, I do do tool reviews, projects, tips, tricks, and more. So make sure you subscribe below and hit the bell because YouTube doesn't notify you in all cases whenever I go live or upload a video. So make sure you hit that bell. And if you're already subscribed, hit the bell. But I have had a chance to check this out a little bit. So we're gonna talk about some of the things that I like and some of the things that I'm not so sure about. So we'll definitely dig into it a little bit more. But first off, let's just take a look at what we got. And holding the thing with the battery on, it does feel really well balanced. As you see right where the handle is, it's balanced perfectly on both sides, which is a big deal. One thing that I like about this that is, isn't like this on every grinder. It is like this on my Milwaukee corded grinder, but it is the switch. The switch in the back, this is able to be activated with one hand and it will stay activated. So you don't have to keep holding the paddle in like with my DeWalt 60 volt brushless grinder. You have to pull the trigger all the time and hold the trigger in and it can become tiresome if you're using this grinder over long periods. And that was one thing that I did like about my Milwaukee corded grinder over the DeWalt grinder, but the DeWalt grinder is probably my favorite grinder. This grinder is a little bit beefier than this grinder just by looking at it and also by going off some of the specs. Obviously this is a six inch grinder. I do believe this is a five inch grinder. So you are able to use a six inch grinding wheel or cutoff wheel on this, but not with the guard on. So if you wanna keep the guard on, you can't go above five inches. With this, the same thing, you can use a six inch with the guard on. I typically don't use the guard, but if you don't, if you're not comfortable using these tools, make sure you use the guard and use the handle because these are dangerous. I have had the Milwaukee one jump out of my hands a lot because you can't get comfortable with that button being like this. You could turn it on and it kind of becomes monotonous. You're just sitting there and I've had it jump out of my hand quite a bit, a lot to where I've almost thought I broke it, but that thing's held up for, I think I've had it for like four or five years and used the heck out of it. So it has definitely earned the money that I paid for it. But we can also look at, they have the brushless written on it, which I do like that. And also with the black overmolding, I do like the way that the black overmolding looks on this. And I also like the way that it feels. It gives me a nice secure grip. I don't feel like that this tool is gonna go anywhere. It has a nice big spot right here for my hand to be able to fit. I do have bigger hands. So that is an issue on a lot of grinders. For instance, the Bauer grinder that I used, I, I don't even know. I was going to try to find that, but I think I actually gave that away. That thing was absolute garbage. You couldn't cut anything. It just kept stopping. I did use this a little bit, so we'll talk about how good this cuts and grinds in a second. But the head is, I believe it's either zinc or aluminum, one or the other. It's not magnetic, so it has to be in that area. Probably aluminum. The This guard is all metal. Even the clasp is metal. So they didn't skimp out there with any type of cheap plastic guards. The back buttons are plastic. The switch on this to go on and off, it's actually, it does move a little bit, but I feel a lot more comfortable using this than I do with say that Bauer one. This does feel like the button is gonna stay for a while and it isn't gonna go anywhere, which is a pretty big deal. Also with the lock button in the back, this is one of the main things with any grinder. If this breaks, your grinder is useless. You can't hold it. You can't take any wheels off or add any wheels on. So this is definitely an important area and it is pretty stout. I've, I, it holds good and I don't feel like it's going to break. This does come with one five inch grinding wheel, which I did use and it seems to be a pretty good grinding wheel. It also comes with a handle and a little spanner wrench for you to be able to take on and off your lock nuts. And the shell also looks pretty good where they meet at, looks really good. It feels really robust. When I grab the handle and I squeeze the handle, it doesn't, it, there's no give at all. So this definitely does not feel like a cheap tool whatsoever. And the specs on this, this they do claim this gets up to 8,500 ripums, whereas this here, like I said, it is a little bit beefier. It'll go up to 9,000. 
that's probably not a humongous difference to where I feel like that this would probably be way more powerful than this, but this is probably the most powerful grinder and the, like I said, the best grinder I've used. So it would take a lot for me to come off of this. The main thing that would bring me off of this though is performance versus price because this can get pretty expensive if you start adding batteries on, but they do offer a lot more batteries than this. I do have a five amp hour battery. Now it's a brand new battery. They sent it out to me with this because this is the, my first introduction into the Hercules 20 volt line. I haven't been a big fan of the Hercules 12 volt line. It just, they just didn't seem to be worth the money compared to what you could get for a similar price, whether you want to go with just Milwaukee, the brush or DeWalt, the brush drill and impact driver. They just seem pretty similar to me in price and the performance just wasn't there. But I have heard good things about the 20 volt impact driver and the 20 volt drill from Hercules. So I definitely was excited to be able to finally check out one of the 20 volt Hercules tools. One of the weird things when turning on the Bauer too was that when you turn the paddle switch on, it just seemed to like it was an old school motor, like you had to crank it and it just took a while for it to warm up. It just took forever to get up to speed. It wasn't like a big deal breaker or something to where I was just like, I wouldn't use it because of that. There was a lot of other things that made me not want to use that grinder, but it was definitely weird. So I was wondering if this was gonna be similar, but no, you turn it on and it's up to speed really quick, just like the DeWalt and all other good grinders are, they come up to speed really fast. A weird thing about this, like when you run this DeWalt, it has a brake on it to where it'll stop after you let off of the trigger. That way it's just not spinning uncontrollably for a while you're waiting on it to slow down, they'll stop. This does the same thing. However, as you can see, whenever I hit the trigger and then stop, it runs for a second and then stops. I don't know if that's maybe some way to like save on the brake or whatever the case may be, but it does run for a second and then all of a sudden just stops. Whereas the DeWalt, it'll just stop when you're done. Something quick about the batteries as well. The battery came in, I wanted to charge it up all the way because I wanted to have full juice when I was using this, but it was on two bars. And they claim that the charger is a fast charger. When I pulled it out, that was the one thing. They're, all of this is made in China. The batteries are processed in China. The cells are from Korea. They're probably Samsung or something like that. And they're processed in China. The same thing you'll read on the Milwaukee and stuff like that. The chargers made in China. The grinders made in China. But a big difference when you open that charger up, it just it has that China smell to it, that cheap China smell that is all too familiar to a lot of us. It, it, and it seems to never go away. It seems to take up the whole garage because ever since I cracked that open, it's all I can smell in here. So if you don't like that smell, you may want to think about that. But the actual function of the charger, they claim it's a fast charger. It had two bars. I put it on. I figured, okay, if this is similar to the DeWalt Milwaukee, they charge pretty fast. It'll probably take 20, 30 minutes for this to charge up. I let it run an hour and it was still blinking, still blinking. So I was, eventually I'm just like, well, I gotta get this video done. So let me pull it off and see how, mu how much it's charged. Well, it said it was charged four bars. So I put it back on and then it stopped blinking. So I don't know if that's an issue to where it just wasn't reading right or what the deal was. And I, so I don't know exactly how long it took for it to get charged because it just kept blinking. But that may be something you wanna keep in mind because the speed that the battery charges in any cordless platform is a pretty big deal if you're using these tools day in and day out. Like I can use this DeWalt grinder with a nine amp hour 60 volt battery and two six amp hour 60 volt batteries and use this grinder all day working professionally and have two on the charger at all times using one and it works pretty well for me. So I need to be able to have a couple chargers, a few batteries, so that way I can keep some on the charger, but I need those batteries to charge pretty quick because these grinders do go through batteries pretty fast. The DeWalt, it, it'll grind straight or cut straight for about 15, 20 minutes or so, I believe. I haven't tested it, I'm just guessing. So that does give you quite a bit of time to be able to have those batteries charging. And I, when I was working with this, I didn't have any downtime at all. I always had a battery that was there ready for me to use. So that's a big thing for me and it may be a big thing for you, something you may wanna keep in mind. A big weird, this is weird, <laughs> this is really weird. If you look at the DeWalt, you can see that their vents are up here where the motor is in the back. and. 
I don't think these are removable for you to be able to clean. Well, as a matter of fact, there's a screw in both sides. So yeah, you can remove these vents, these screens, I should say, to be able to clean. That way it keeps nice airflow inside your tool, keeps your motor from burning up prematurely. These here have removable vents as well, except you can just pull the vents out. Now, one of the vents, it just comes out really easy. It doesn't feel like it's stuck in there hardly at all. So I foresee that in the future, that may become a problem to where it'll fall out a lot. Or if you bump it up against something, it may snag it and pull it out and break one of the little plastic pieces that the screen slides into the actual tool. So it's, I don't, I'm not 100% sure on if that's going to be a good idea or not. Another thing that's weird is where the actual vents are on the bottom of the tool. The motor, I would imagine, is up here in the main portion of the body away from the handle because this is going to be your weak point of this tool. If it would snap, it would probably snap in this area. So they would want to keep the motor out of there, obviously, and also because the motor may not fit into the handle. So I'm not sure why the vents are all the way down here. Hopefully it will have enough airflow and keep it cool enough. Now, I did use this, like I said, and it's got some power. I was able to make it stop one time pressing down really hard, but then after it kind of caught its second wind, I couldn't make it stop at all. It's similar to the DeWalt, I can't make that thing stop. And that's a big deal. Just like I said with the Bauer, it just kept stopping over and over again, over and over again. And that's no good for anybody. That may be, I, I don't even know who I could have recommended that to. I said that in the video. This here, no problem whatsoever eating through. I grind it for about three to four minutes straight, and then I made a nice long cut, about eight to 12 inches long, and the battery was still on three bars. So I was really impressed with that because that was quite a bit of grinding straight and cutting, and uh, also the motor didn't seem to get hot. So overall, it seems to be a pretty powerful tool, which is the whole point of them going brushless here. They're obviously going after professionals maybe, but also after the serious DIY guys. And that's who Harbor Freight's been going after for a while now. They have been up in their tools. Harbor Freight works hard to try to get good tools at a good price because $99 for this, I have to say, is a pretty good deal. And as everybody knows that shops at Harbor Freight, they're going to have some sort of coupon for this. I would imagine, I don't know anything. I'm just speculating right there, but I would imagine there'll be some kind of coupon in the future. Also, I did see online, however, that if you buy this, a battery and a charger, they will take $25 off this. So I guess that's their attempt at having some kind of kit because you can only buy this in the bare tool as of right now. So all in all, I feel like that this probably is a pretty good tool. And the guy told me that they went through great lengths to make sure that they tested this to make sure that it is a good tool and meets their quality. And I believe them just judging off of what I used it. Now, there are a lot of issues when it comes to cordless tools for me when it comes to Harbor Freight, but I like what they're doing. And if you don't mind, if you don't need a whole bunch of tools, then you know, and you like Hercules, I don't see anything wrong with it. $99 for this, I feel like is an extremely good deal. I think this bare tool is about 150, 160, 170. So that's a pretty big difference. The Milwaukee, similar one, you can get those, pretty good deal, but still more expensive than this. But with that being said, this does come with the Harbor Freight 90 day warranty. So you are gonna have to buy the two year, two year extended warranty if you wanna get a warranty on this. And I don't usually buy the warranty because most of the tools that I buy from there are for videos for this. But if you're gonna be using a the tool, then definitely think about getting a warranty. One of the great things about that warranty is that you can keep buying that warranty over and over again, over and over again. Every two years go in, pay $20 and then so for $20 every two years you got you a pretty good grinder in this case for the rest of your life essentially I haven't never seen anybody get stopped from doing this but one last thing that I do like about this compared to this DeWalt because one of the problems that I have with this DeWalt is when I'm using it I have to constantly keep laying it down and I've broke disc before and stuff like that 
laying it down. As you can see, I can stand this straight up and it stands up on its own with the disc on, with the handle on. But I do like that. I like to be able to just use it, stick it over there, set it, stand it up, and just use it whenever I need it again. It's not something humongous, but I thought it was pretty nice that it does this compared to the DeWalt. That's one thing that I do like. There's a few things that I like this better than the DeWalt when it comes to the paddle and, like I just said, the standing up. The, the compact size of this compared to the DeWalt is a pretty big difference. As you can see, if you put them side to side, you can see that the DeWalt is a lot bigger, but it's four or six inch grinder, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger. This does have its place, and that's one, reason, one thing that I like about the Milwaukee one that I have. It's a smaller grinder. I'm able to use it with one hand, which is pretty important, especially if you're a mechanic or something, or if you work on something to where you have to get in anywhere. Sometimes it's hard to hold stuff up there with two hands, so it's nice to be able to just use one hand, but you gotta be careful when you're doing something like that. But I appreciate y'all watching. Let me know what you guys think about this. I don't think that they're even selling them yet, but if you're interested in this and you're thinking about buying it, I don't wanna say go buy it because I try not to do that whenever somebody sends me something, but I honestly, just using it for the little bit that I have used it, feel like this is a pretty stout tool and I'm pretty impressed with it. And I think that the direction they're going in is the right direction. Make sure you stay tuned for the video. I'm gonna talk about a lot of their other cordless tool with some big news about one of their other cordless tool names that you would probably be interested in. Appreciate you. Till next time, stay real.